we'll come back. All right. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Matters of Faith, the radio show. Matters of Faith is a show designed to bring issues of interest to you, the listening audience, that will challenge, encourage, motivate, and inspire you to keep the faith. I am your host, the Reverend Dr. J. Lauren Russell, and it's my job to engage you in stimulates dialogue, dialogue that's inspiring, encouraging, motivating, dialogue and conversations that will help you build your determination, your commitment, and your character, conversations that will help you Everyone born of God overcomes the world. Jesus is the one that has overcome the world. First John 5 and 4. And now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, without further ado, it is time for that is faith and radio show. Good evening, everybody. Today is Monday, August the 1st, 2022. And it's 8 o'clock time for that is faith and radio show. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the article and the topic, Don't Turn Back. And my very special guest tonight, contributor to Matters of Faith, second time visitor to Matters of Faith, Evangelist, Dow Tracy. Telephone and tell a friend they don't want to miss this show tonight. Evangelist, Dow Tracy is with us. Are the trustees in your house of worship knowledgeable of all of their judiciary responsibilities? Are the disciples of your house of worship? aware of the Lord's biblical economic strategy? Are you planning to renovate, build, refinance, or develop your church property? Well, the JLR company, J. Lauren R. Consulting LLC, is here to help you. Give us a call at 718-328-8096. That's 718-328-8096. Or visit our website, www.jlaurenrussellconsulting.com. That's www.jlrorenrussellconsulting.com. At the JLRC, JLRC, it's not about the chapter, it's about the team. With a copy of Matters of Faith's book, you can use the track that dollar sign Matters of Faith. The book is $22.80 with covers, shipping, and handling. Or you can send a check on my mail to the JLR company, post office box, 1035. That's post office box 301, New York, New York, 1035. You can also get the book as an ebook. Just go to www.smashwords.com and at the book slash box B backslash 99387. That's www.smashwords. Dot com backslash book backslash b backslash nine nine three one seven seven. There is a fifty percent discount. Fifty dollars a month. Check out the Edo for app for black-owned restaurants all over the nation. Yes, get the Edo for app. Now please subscribe, like, and share our Manager Space YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, and share the Manager Space YouTube channel. Brian. Physical therapy. With three locations in Harlem, Triumph Physical Therapy has become a go to provider for musculoskeletal care. Did you know that up to 40% of extremity pain can come from spinal source? Did you know that you can cure your knee, hip, or ankle pain by doing back exercises? Did you know that you can cure your shoulder, elbow, or wrist pain by doing neck exercises? Did you ever wonder why your knees bother you? When you're sitting and not using them? Well, at Triumph, they do their best to answer those and any other questions you may have. They use a unique approach that is based on the latest research in science and musculoskeletal care. Now, their approach works and their patients will testify to them. I know I'm one of them. Don't take my word for it. Try it to yourself. Before you take that pill or schedule that surgery, 
give them a call at 212-234-2900. That's 212-234-2900. Triumph Physical Therapy. We go to provide 212-234-2900. Love thy neighbor, incorporated project, is preparing for their annual back to school run. They are collecting backpacks, book bags, lunch boxes, pencils, erasers, stockings, crayons, colors, and calculators, socks, shoes, sneakers, and snacks. The shipping and handling instructions follow them on their Facebook page, love underscore thy underscore neighbor underscore project. That's love underscore thy underscore neighbor underscore project. Or just simply visit their website, www.lovethyneighbor7.org. That's www.lovethyneighbor7.org. Every gift makes a difference in the lives of our children. www.lovethyneighbor7.org. Please, ma'am, please, sir. More than ever, we need to make sure that we get back to you. This virus is not quite over yet. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for someone that you love. Anyone age of five and above are eligible to be vaccinated. Please sit and read the instructions. Please, ma'am, please, sir, get vaccinated. I wanted to thank every one of you, either for attending and or supporting. Last week, Tuesday, as I preached for the Baptist Ministry Conference for the Bronx and by Trinity. I want to thank you so much for support from that now dear Lord. And I did record it and I did put it on the J Long Russell as well as the Malik Face Facebook group. If you have not had a chance to take a look at it, please do. The sermon that I preach to me is a call. Make sure you get a chance to see it. But I just want to thank you so much. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, sir. For sharing, for participating, and most of all, for your support. And now the article. Don't turn back. That article can be found in my column, Matters of Faith, at thebronxchronicle.com. That's www.thebronxchronicle.com. Scroll down until you find my column, Matters of Faith. There you will find this article, and it is entitled, Don't Turn Back. Genesis chapter 19, verses 17 and 26 from the New King James Version. So it came to pass, when they had brought them outside, that he said, Escape to your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. But his wife looked back behind him, and she too was still at the place. Don't look back. Destroy his life, Billy. Not with Abraham. Okay? And then his father got hurt. And when his father, the child of promise, that word is not there, and took Lot with him and left the plain to his heir. Abraham gave Lot the choice of which. Land he wanted to live. My chose to live in the free state of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was in his mind to go straight down to Sodom. There came a time when the Lord's fury was unleashed on Sodom. The Lord instructed Lot to get out of that town, take his family with him, and not to look back. God didn't say not to remember, but not to look back. He and his family needed to remember that they could have they could avoid the personal and collective mistakes made by their community as well as their own, but they were not to turn back. Apparently, Lot's wife didn't get the message and turned back. That simple act of turning back when she was specifically told not to turned her into a pillar of salt. God had a plan for Lot and his family, but turning back changed that plan. It no longer included Lot's wife. What a tragedy, what a tragedy it is to be the cause of God changing his plan. Our future is ahead of us, not behind us. We cannot go back to yesterday and we cannot go forward into tomorrow. We must remember our past and learn from it. Live in the present and make the most of it and plan for the future. Which is so essential. Don't turn back. Thank you. Here's my question for tonight, guys. What are some of the consequences of turning back from a spiritual perspective? Can I ask it again? What are some of the consequences of turning back from a spiritual perspective? Now, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce this guest tonight. This young man is 
um, near and dear to my heart. Uh, we become great friends um, for numbers of reasons. So Matters of Faith family, let me introduce him the way I planned it, like this. An evangelist, Daryl Tracy, is an evangelist. Raised in the down Bronx, and now resides in the city of Fort Mill, South Carolina. He is a member of the Restoration Ministries Worldwide Church under the pastor of Bishop Tyrone D. Brown. He attended aviation high school in Long Island City, and not long afterward joined the Marine Corps, where he learned about and worked with computers. During his military time, he was stationed in South Carolina. He selected that state to settle in when his tour was completed. He found the open skies, warm weather, and friendly people quite a bit different from the world. In fact, it was there that he met and married Zena, his wife of 37 years. Together, they have three beautiful daughters and five wonderful grandchildren with their first great grandchild, either on the way or have already arrived. He said as much of who he is today, not only to his parents, but to the Bronx Boys and Girls Club. stop my share and I'm going to bring this brother on bring this brother in welcome Daryl to matters of faith yet again so good to see you now listen before you say anything you know I read your bio everybody knows who you are where you come from they know your, your you know your government name and all that kind of stuff but tell us something about you that we don't know and we really should know about you wow something you don't know about me that you should um uh i'm cookie monster i love cookies i probably love to eat cookies too much uh, i got a terrible sweet tooth oh my god don't send me cookies or cakes or sweets or something like that because i'm gonna eat them <laughs> i'm gonna eat them I mean, you know, I need to stay away from sweets. God knows I need to stay away from sweets. Um, but I'm I'm just being humorous. Um, but that's true though. I'm just saying it because that's true. Um, I, 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 that's a hard one, Laura. That's a hard one. Uh, something that you don't know that you probably should know. I, I'm from the same area of the Bronx that you're from. You know, like you and I have some history in Parkchester, and I still got to explore that further. When when we both where we both came from there, like how were we there close to the same time? I'm sure we were, um, but I'm not exactly sure where. Um, and although I don't live in the Bronx anymore, I live in South Carolina. I miss the Bronx. I miss New York terribly. You know, I, I do. I love New York. New York was my 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 crucible and and i miss it i miss it yeah we miss you too we miss you too a lot of stuff to go a lot of stuff we're doing up here I mean, there's a just a ton of things that we're doing here in this in this boogie down that um you know that really beckons and calls for a lot of people to come and be a part of it because truly speaking um we're, we we need a lot of help i mean what we're going through here is um you know, it, it, it's very, uh, what should I say? Um, we're going through a lot here in New York City. Uh, as you know, I mean, it's the shootings, it's the 
it's the it's the it's just like it's blatant what we're going through is just blatant and i know it's happening around the country i know that because in my you know my 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 sister i have family in south carolina and i think <laughs> i shared with the matters of faith family uh that there was a there was a shooting uh down in my in my sister's hometown and uh it was not pretty they shot up my sister-in-law's house oh. and, um i mean like like bonnie and clyde stuff thank wow. god she wasn't hurt but well, that's the know. kind of stuff that we have going on that's the kind of stuff and so we miss you up here but hey you got work to do down there because it's not it's not localized and it's certainly not it's not just in the bronx so it's everywhere but here's the point this is interesting a cookie monster huh yes sir yes sir terrible cookie monster oh yes they don't make no difference who make them as long as they cookies huh you know it's 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 a sad it's a sad state, bro. And I'm putting out there publicly. It was my secret up, up until I said it on, show, on this show. My wife knows about it. And my kids know about it. And they know not to leave them down around me. Mm. I, I, I try not to touch my wife's because she has certain kinds that she likes. And so if she says, these are mine, Daryl, don't touch them. Right? Then I ain't going to touch them for, for a little while. But if I see them sitting around too long, then, then, then it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's a hey let me ask you a question yes sir grand, your grandchild arrived yet your great yes grand great grand has arrived he is six seven, seven months now seven, seven months. months old but uh, thank you for asking thank you for yeah, asking he, name? his name is abednego king Abednego, okay. Uh, you had like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego? Yeah, I, know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Abednego King. I got a grandson, Princeton, and we like the name Princeton so much for that grandson that uh, Abednego's mama, she wanted to do something that had nobility attached to it as well. Right. And so she, she liked the king in it, but she loved the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay. And uh, so he's his name is Abednego. I just call him Ben because Abednego gets long. So I just call him Ben. But his name is Abednego King. He's a handsome little fellow. He does not look like his great grandfather because what I don't have up here, he's got a head full of, you know, a uh, very handsome young man. And we, the family, is very proud to welcome him in. Yes. Excellent. 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 That's good. That's good. Now, the other thing, man, how's the, um, How's the book coming along? You had a manuscript. You're still working on it? Working on it slowly, slowly. Uh, every time I think I have enough material to go ahead and finish it, uh, God drops something new in. And I'm, I guess I'm not finished yet because I, I think I just have to cut it and just put what I got because I get poured into so much that I want to and I want to include the new in with the other that if I don't cut it somewhere and just put what I have, I'm, I'm never going to do it, you know? I just got to draw a, 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 a point where I'm just going to stop here and put this in and then whatever else I have, it'll be like maybe the sec the next book or the third book or whatever. Well, you know, your, your, the title of your book is good for you right now. Go, go sit down somewhere <laughs> <laughs> and finish that book. Yes, sir. <laughs> sit down somewhere and, finish, but I, and I know about that because my, my second and third books, you know, um, thank God what I do is I, I, I literally use compilations from the articles that I write. But I've uh -huh. got from the articles that I've written, if I keep them the same size as my current book, there's at least eight more there. Wow. All I have to do is compile and put them together and put them out. Uh, yes. And some people have been asking me, and I just have to go sit down somewhere <laughs> i got this <laughs> or do what he does yes so, yes, yes. So it's interesting because you know i i think that many times you know we have the we have the fodder we have the, we have the you know when i say fodder, i mean like the charcoal we got the uh -huh. lighter fluid we got uh -huh. the matches we got the grill uh -huh. but we ain't cooking yes sir so we got to get the cooking got yes it. sir yes sir I think the the content, the content is even more relevant currently. I understand why he didn't let me release it before, because the the times we live in are dynamic. You know what I mean? They're very th these times are very dynamic, and 
from 2020 to now, so many things have changed and there are so many new perspectives and so much more urgency on the one hand to know God, you know, to hear from him and to remove the things that were holding us back and to move forward and become more deeply connected and more realistically connected, you know, with God. The, the, the stuff that was traditional, the stuff that we learned that we, you know, we saw mom and daddy do it this way. And so that's how we do it now is because right. that's, that, that's not good enough anymore. You know, that, that, that's not good enough anymore. And so the content is, is more important now because I, I, I speak of urgency, the urgency of, the, of, of, a, of a deep relationship with God and one that is not, uh, one that is not based on how things used to be, but on really being alive on the inside and being alert to hearing his voice now, you know, like, like, like now. When he says, go sit down somewhere, I got this, and whether he says it as a whisper or whether he yells it to you, you got to hear him. You know, you got to hear him and you got to do what he says do. If it be as simple as just go sit down somewhere, be patient, you know, be still, go sit down somewhere. You got to hear him. If he says it as a whisper, but you're used to hearing him speak loudly, then you might be like, oh, I'm used to hearing him loud, but now he's speaking as a whisper. So that must not be him. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You got to be so in tune with God now. In these days, you got to be so in tune with him now, whether he speaks loud, whether he speaks in a whisper, whether he speaks in a cloud, whether he speaks in, in a little candle flame, you got to hear him. And you got to be instant to do what he says do, because the things outside of him are so crazy that uh, if you don't hear him, you don't get caught up. And it, it, it might be a, a, a chance that you can't get out of what you get caught up in if you don't move when he says move, how he says move at the time he says move. That's interesting. Um, uh, I think that kind of sort of segues right into the conversation about don't turn back. Uh, last yeah. week, we were talking about Hagar, right? And her position, and, and she was told to go back. This week, we were looking at Lot, and Lot was told, don't go back, don't yeah. turn back. And so uh, it, it seems like there's a uh, if you if you read those two side by side, there's a contradiction. But you know, sometimes you go back. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's it's it, 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 it. I guess the bottom line to it all is that it's the will of God. If you're mm -hmm. in the will of God, then you do what you're instructed to do. If He says don't go back, you don't go back. If He That's says right. go back, you go back. That's right. Still His will. You know, and I, and I think in my closing remarks, I will say this, that we get the choice or we get the ability to choose how we want to, where we want to go, how we want to get there and all of that. So in other words, God gives us free will to choose, but we, what we don't get mm -hmm. the choice to choose what the consequences of those actions are. That's right. That's right. I like that. That's good. That's good. That's very powerful. And that's very true. Um, you know, an, an, another thing that occurs to me with this is this time right here mm -hmm. that, that we serve God and we worship God and we give God praise and we obey him and we have faith in him is a different, we're, it's different on us than it will be when we go to heaven. You know, when we go to heaven, he's going to wipe every tear. We're not going to need, there's not going to be anything to make us cry. You know, there's not going to be anything there to make us hurt. There's not going to be anything there to make us doubt, to make us feel ill at ease. There's not going to be any sickness. There's not going to be any disease. And so it'll be easy to love God when we're right there with him because we won't be under any stress. We won't be under any pressure. You know, the, the Bible talks about it's, I, what good is it if you love somebody that, that loves you back? You know, you love, that's the same thing. What, what gain is it? But love your enemies, bless them that that you know that that curse you, uh, pray for them that despitefully use you. This time here, 
we is, is more powerful. This is where we earn our crowns. When we are able to worship God, to trust God, to have faith in God while we're in pain, while we're struggling, while we don't know how that bill is going to get paid. We don't know if that sickness or that disease is going to get, we're, we're, the facts, all the facts tell us it ain't going to happen. But we still trust God. We still have faith in God. We still believe God that it's going to be all right, that things are going to turn out. We still believe all things work together for the good of them. When we, this is the time, this is a different time of worship. This is a stronger time. This is like a, this is, this to us is a special time of worship because we truly get to prove just how much we love you, God. We get to prove that here because we, it's not easy for us to do it. And yet we still going to do it. You know what I mean? So, so it, that's another thing that occurs to me uh, uh, about that. Yep, yep, no doubt about it. It's um, you know, when when we look at our when we look at our present, we look at our future. We glance back over. We don't turn around, but we remember our past because our past gives us the ability to um, determine our present, and our present gives us you know the opportunity to determine you know what we're going to do with our future mm -hmm. right so every day that we live we get an opportunity to determine our future and i one of my one of my friends likes to say uh your preferred future what do you prefer your future to be amen because amen. you get the choice you can you know whatever you want the choice is yours amen you have to make the choice amen amen my wife and i you know it's funny you say that we were just talking about this today you, you got the devil on one side you know, temptation and the world on one side and facts. A person goes to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, you know, you have cancer and you've got like two months to live. And, you know, that, that's his diagnosis and that's his professional opinion and all. And those are facts. You went to the doctor, the doctor looked and he saw so and so. So, so those are facts. And I'm not telling anybody to dismiss the facts, you know, for whatever the situation or condition is. But that doesn't necessarily make it the truth. You know, God's truth is they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so in that moment that the diagnosis of the facts is presented, that's the very moment. At that moment, there's a choice made in that person. Who am I going to believe? Am I going to believe what the facts say? Am I going to believe what the truth says? I'm going to turn to God. You know, this is what Christians do. This is what we're supposed to do. Okay, Doc, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I, I hear everything what you're saying. I heard everything you said. And give me just a moment. You know, that however a person does that. So give me just a moment. And then they turn to look God. God, what do you say? You know, that's what we turn into the word, right? And we say, God, what do you say? And then when God says, well, I'm not saying that. I, I'm saying uh, Jesus came that you might have life. And that more abundantly, you know, you're going to lift up your eyes, what you need to do, lift up your eyes into the hills and when it's coming to your help. Your help cometh from the Lord, not me coming, not a, your help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth, right? Um, and so, you know, at that point, once, once that person is presented with both sides of the issue, um, they have a choice to believe and, and, and get the consequences. If you believe God, you're going to receive from God because God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. You're going to receive from God what he said that you're going to receive from believing him. If you believe a doctor, you're going to receive what you get from whatever that side is. And that's the point of choice that I, I believe that you, you, you speak into that applies of, across the board, no, no matter what. If it's on the job, you know, and somebody presents you with an opportunity to, you know, commit some sort of theft or to commit some sort of uh, 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 um, you know, some uh, extortion or criminal act, you know, um, different businesses. Sometimes they ask you to cut corners, but don't let the customer know, you know, all different kinds of ways in life. People are asked to choose who, who do they believe? Do you believe God? Do you believe other than God? And it's, and, and those moments can happen so quickly uh, that people miss them. And before they know it, they done already made the choice and it's the wrong choice. But they didn't even realize that's what it was, was a moment of choice. But everyone, every moment is a moment of choice. Really? 
that's a very good point. In fact, as you were talking, I was thinking about it. God's word versus the reality of the present. Um, then, and you talk about illnesses and sicknesses. And this past weekend in our spiritual enrichment hour, uh, mm -hmm. that's what we call our study period on Sunday morning. Our Amen. spiritual enrichment hour, what we did was um, we had an opportunity to um, look at what it means to, uh, um, I, I gotta give a custom notification. Hold on for one second. You talk, I gotta, I gotta respond to a telephone call that just came in. I'll tell you why. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. 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 Um, <clears throat> so the article was an interesting article. I know we don't segue back into it. Um, the, it was an interesting article when we were, you know, you were talking about remembering uh, Lot's wife and not turning back and the choice that was presented to both of them because Lot had the same choice as his wife did. Um, he had received the same instruction that she, and, and matter of fact, they both actually received help because it ain't like they just left on their own. You know what I mean? The angels took them out because they, was, they were dragging their feet. So the angels actually took them out yep. of, with, of, of their homes and whatnot because they were dragging their feet. Um, so she knew what was going on and she knew the, the direction that they were instructed to go. But the angels had told them, we can't, we can't do that, what we're going to do over here till y'all get over there. You right. know? And, and so, so she knew, she, she knew, she knew. Um, and I'm just using the contrast between the choice that Lot made, you know, in the, in the midst of the moment. And the choice that his wife made, they don't even name his wife or her name is, even her name, she's remembered, but not even her name is remembered. Um, um, because God really was like, that's not worth, she's not worth remembering in that regard. Um, but she made a different choice. And God used that as an example to us that in, and I don't want to go too far ahead because I know we're going to explore it deeper, so I don't want to go get too deep with it. But there's destruction attached to what God has told us to left behind. There, there, there's if God is going to destroy it and he calls you out of it, keep going. Because the destruction is for that thing, not for you. That's why he called you out of it. So if you turn back as if you will miss it, that's what you want. You can have that. But, but you, it ain't the consequence, you, you mentioned it earlier, the consequence really ain't going to be in your best interest. And God wants us to have his best. He wants us to have it. He wants us to have better than we even know we, so we can get, you know? Um, but she she made the wrong choice in that regard. And so, let, so me, let, me, let, me, let me go back. I, I wanna, I, I appreciate that too. She did make a choice and, and we get to choose. We get to choose what we wanna do with our lives and where we wanna go and, 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 and the kinds of things we wanna do. I was, I was actually sharing because you had talked about a um, person getting a diagnosis from a doctor. And, yeah. you know, what is God saying? What is he saying? Or what is mm -hmm. the doctor saying? And what is the Lord saying? And, and, and of course, we like to pray for healing, right? Because we believe God going to heal. But as we all know, God don't heal everybody. That's right. Paul would tell you that himself. If, if, if the apostle Paul would say, yeah, I, I pray constantly. He took this. This, this thorn out of my flesh. And he said, no, my mm -hmm. grace is sufficient for you. So Amen. we have to begin to understand that it is, it is an opportunity for us to engage the Lord and pray for his will to be done. Not Amen. ours, because Amen. he's a genie in the bottle that we rub and he comes out and say, okay, what's your wish today? Uh, mm -hmm. I know you're saved. I know I know you. I know that you pray with, to me all the time, but, but, mm -hmm. but you make these requests but it's still my will. So it gives us an opportunity to, 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 to recognize God's will in our lives and then live our lives in that way. Then you talk mm -hmm. about Lot's choice, uh, Lot's wife, and you said she wasn't named. And that's true. We don't know who she was. We don't know what her name was. Right. You know this, that she was married to a man who was the son of the father of our faith, who had a great deal of faith himself. Right. Mm -hmm. He recognized the angels as angels and he took care of them. His wife was there. He did all of those kinds of things. And then mm -hmm. they told him, they said, get out of town, uh, take your family, uh, take your take your daughters. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Okay, I don't want to jump ahead either because <laughs> the story about Lot is um, if if you if you look at it in terms of its its content, uh, you would say this is the craziest story I've read in my life. I mean, it's better than any soap opera, any soap opera, because what he did with his daughters, right, uh, was just mind blowing. And anyone who's a father who has daughters, and, right. And 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 they heard of somebody offering their daughters to somebody to do with whatever they wanted to, you know. Every father who has a daughter would just right. shudder, right? So, right. You know, and, and this is the man that's written about in the book, Lot. And this mm -hmm. is the man that was saved from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. His wife chose to turn around, to look back, to turn back, and she was turned to a pillar of salt. So God's plan for his family, for Lot's family, was detoured. It no longer included his wife. Yes. And the interesting thing is that they were both engaged to be married because Lot went to her those fiancés and told them to get out of town quick before the destruction comes. And they thought that he was joking. Right, right, right. And then... They weren't included in the plan either because it was him, his wife, and his daughters. Yep. And then his wife turns around and she is exed out of the plan. Yep. So sometimes we can cause God to change his mind mm -hmm. and his plan mm -hmm. because of our actions. So my question tonight was, what are some of the consequences of turning back from a spiritual perspective? Yeah, yeah. And so when I look at this, right, and I, and I contrast it with the story of, of Hagar, who went back to her mistress, who went back to that, 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 that um, you know, evil treatment that she was getting because the mm -hmm. Lord sent her. So mm -hmm. for me, it's not so important uh, what the Lord tells you to do, go back or not to turn back. Right. But it's the obedience. It's mm -hmm. following the instruction of the Lord. That's what's critically important. You don't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Then the consequences of your choice mm -hmm. are not your choice. Yes. Yes. You know, what the... One of the dominant things that jumped out just now as you were talking was don't go back. It's not a thing that refers to geography, right? Your geographical, it's not a geographical thing, don't turn back, but it is a thing about position. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a thing about position. When you when your position is right with God, you don't want to turn to a position that wasn't, that isn't right with God. See, right. Sodom and Gomorrah had gotten outside of God's will. And right. so the thing that was uh, uh, stored up for them was God's wrath. Right. You know, his wrath was stored up and it was fin to be released. You know, that's one of them Southern words. I don't know if y'all know that up there, but, you know, when we say fin, fixing to, uh, up, up, you know, in New York. Everybody up here from somewhere in the South or out. Or, or, or the West, the West Indies, we all fixing to do something. <laughs> <laughs> we all from somewhere, you know what I mean? So right. I get it. Right, 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 right. right. But I, that tripped me out when I moved down south. I'm not trying to get off track, but I'm just saying when I moved down south, uh, and, and the the words that they use down here, like I'm finna go to the store. What? Yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. But but I learned that right. So I like it. I use it all the time. I say if I ran into some of my old friends from up in New York and I said Finna, they would look at me like what? You know what what? Um, but but the wrath of God was going to be released on Sodom and Gomorrah, and Sodom and Gomorrah had gotten out of position. If they hadn't already been destroyed, they had ch they had a chance. You know what I mean? God is a God of second, third, fourth, fifth, nineteenth chance. God will give chance after chance after chance after chance for people to turn from being outside, out of position, you know, outside of his will and to turn back. He gives people chance after chance after chance. But there comes a day when there's no more chances. There's now the wrath is going to be released. And so 
Um, and so, oh, I almost lost my train of thought because uh, I got so deep into that other thing. But, but um, I did lose my train of thought. Okay, well, don't worry. I'll pick it up. I'll pick it up. Okay. Um, what's interesting, what you're saying, is that the, you know, the choices that we make, mm -hmm. the decisions that determine where we go, right? Not only do they have consequences, but they have spiritual consequences that right. impact us in ways that, um, that 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 sometimes we can't even imagine. So when right. you look at some of the biblical characters, when you look at when you look at the lots, when you look at Lot's wife, when you look at Hagar, when you look at the disciples, when you look at uh, Noah, when you look mm -hmm. at when you look at um, Jonah, when you mm -hmm. look at all, any of these biblical figures, any of them, any of them, uh, look at um, um, what's my girl, what's the name, um, um, Bathsheba, mm -hmm. when you look at David, when mm -hmm. you look at um, uh, uh, what's her name, what's young, I can't think of her name, the one that the one that hid the spies when when when, when Joshua was coming through. What oh oh oh, uh, I can't think of her name, but I know who you're talking about. Just popped out, okay. So, right. so if you look at every one of them, they all made choices. And if I looked at her, uh, and somebody would tell me, tell me who I'm talking about, guys, because you guys can help me out here. Um, the, the woman who hid uh, uh, the spies when they were sent out to spy out the land. Um, when, when she made a choice, which could have been detrimental to her, because had they found that she was harboring those spies, she would have been killed. She would have been killed. But the interesting thing, and she was a harlot. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say, um, starts with an H too. Um, um, Hagar is in my mind, that's why it can't, won't come to me. But she was a harlot. And, and which means that she was a whore, she was a prostitute. Right. But because of the choice that she made, she's actually in the lineage of Jesus Christ. She's one. That was Rahab. Her name was Rahab. Rahab. Yeah, Ray, thank you, thank you. So mm -hmm. Rahab is is on the ancestral line of Jesus, which tells us something, right? The choices that you make do have spiritual consequences, and right. sometimes those consequences are bright. She never saw it. She never saw that she was going to be an ancestor of Jesus, God in the flesh, but she was. Amen. Had she chosen something different, had mm -hmm. she chose not to harbor those spies, mm -hmm. she would not have been. Mm -hmm. Her name would not have been chronicled in the Holy Writ as one Amen. of the, 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 the persons of faith. Yes. Great faith and great yes. action. So, and she's so, beloved. Yep. Yep. So the consequences of turning back have spiritual repercussions. Yes, you, that, you, you brought it back to my mind where, where, where I was going with that, was being in position versus being out of position. Okay. Choosing to be in position versus choosing, going back is not a thing about being geographical where you are, but it's, but it's more about being spiritual where you are. See, Hagar was out of position when she left, when she left. She had actually, up out pastor at church preached on this, he preached, and basically he just sort of touched on it, but I liked the topic and where he was going with it. He said, no trespassing. Don't trespass. Where you ain't supposed to be, don't go. Because it's against the law. It's against the law to trespass into an area where you're not supposed to be. And so uh, um, Hagar was being sort of obedient. She was being obedient to uh, her mistress when she left. But she really wasn't in position because she was mocking Sarai. She was mocking her before she, you know, she was kicked out. She was like, nah, 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 nah. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm pregnant and I got a baby. And you know, and, and Sarah, Sarai was sort of like, look, 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 look. I, I ain't trying to eat all that. I ain't trying. So she was wrong. She, she, she was actually wrong first. But what God told her was, I need to get you back in position because you're out of position right now. So I need you. I need you back in position because I hear when you're out of position, there's destruction for you. This ain't this. 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 These. The consequences that you're gonna experience if you stay out of position aren't the consequences that I that I want for you. 
you know, it's, it's, it, that's basically that's, that's what it is, you know, and all. And so um, with Lot's wife, Lot's wife was in position and the situation that God was about to cut loose on Sodom and Gomorrah, that was done, done, done. It, there was no more chance. And so that's why her destruction was immediate. Whereas with Hagar, she sort of got a chance. You know, she left, she went out of position, but God gave her a chance to come back. With with Lot's wife, she was already in position and she left being in position. And she once she left out of being in position, it was too late. It was nothing. God was like, the wrath is already there. There's nothing I can do for you and all. And so it wasn't a geographical issue, you know, and some people could take it like that, but it's not geographical. It is spiritual, as, as you were just saying. And the consequences, God is trying to develop us as his children. And there's a distinct line between believers and unbelievers. And God is using this season as an example to make that line clearer, make it more solid, make it more defined. Believers are going, this, this is this is what this, this is where you are. And unbelievers, this is, and I'm gonna make it more clear. And I'm gonna show my favor on the ones who are believers and as opposed to what's happening to the ones who's not believing and i ain't gonna go into more detail with that because that could open up a can of worms but okay, so let me obvious. let me it's jump obvious. in the worm and then let me jump in the wormhole i like that <laughs> okay i wanted to because um you know one of the things that popped out popped out was that this woman mm -hmm. who's married to a man who has favor from god turned back and was turned into a pillar of salt mm -hmm. We know nothing else about her experience except that she was turned into a pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. We know nothing about her salvation. We know we don't even know her name. Mm -hmm. But I would surmise. Now, this is my theological um, uh, interpretation. Okay. My spiritual understanding. Mm -hmm. It does not necessarily mean that she lost her place in the kingdom. And I'll tell you why. In the church, I'm Baptist, though, so in the Baptist church, we okay. believe in the doctrine of eternal salvation, eternal mm -hmm. security. So we say things like once saved, always saved. Right. Right. right, right. That's because if a person professes to know the Lord, professes Christ as their Savior, and really means it, your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and not a demon in hell can take it out. I happen to believe that. But it's not just I believe it because it's willy-nilly. I believe it because scripturally it says so. I'll give you for instance. John 10, 28 and 29 says, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither mm -hmm. shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Mm -hmm. My Father, who mm -hmm. has given them to me, is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. And then and Ephesians 4 and 30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And Philippians 1 and 6, mm -hmm. being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, Amen. why do I say that? I say that because if Lot's wife was a believer as I believe she was. She married, you know, favor of God was in her household. Mm -hmm. She made a bad choice. Mm -hmm. That choice made her life come to a conclusion, mm -hmm. right? So some of the choices that we make have severe consequences. Amen. But it did not necessarily now, we don't know a lot of details about it because the Bible doesn't share it with us. So it's left to our interpretation and our biblical understanding. Right. If it right. took away her salvation. <clears throat> then it tells us that we can no longer make mistakes if and when we become saved and believers in God. That means that we would be mm. perfect. And if we mm -hmm. be perfect, we couldn't live on this earth because there are no perfect beings on the earth. And so mm -hmm. every day we pray this prayer that the Lord gave to us that includes the words and give us this day our daily bread and forgive mm -hmm. us of our trespasses. 
right. every day. Mm -hmm. Because Paul said in his words, I die daily. Mm -hmm. Every day I have to repent of my sins, sins of omission and sins of commission. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who aren't um, uh, followers of the way, followers of Christ, this may be a theological discussion for you, maybe one that you've never heard, but I want you to understand it because this can make or break you in terms of your, your faith in the Lord. Because if you understand who he is, the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and heal us of our transgressions mm -hmm. if we in fact confess. But mm -hmm. if a mistake could rob you of your salvation, then the God that we say we serve ain't much of a God. You know, it even goes on to say, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Absolutely. Absolutely. It doesn't stop right. It doesn't stop where I stop. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. It doesn't stop where we stop. <laughs> you know, it just keeps going. Where we stop, where we, where we leave it because of our finite existence, everything about us has a definitive beginning, mm -hmm. a definitive middle, and a definitive mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. God is everlasting. He's eternal. There is no beginning mm -hmm. and there is no end. Mm -hmm. He is forever. He never was born because he always was. Mm -hmm. He never will die because he always is. Mm -hmm. he, is the, he is the is that is the is. Yeah, that, and and, and as, as, as quote unquote, and I don't really mean it like that, but as silly as the, earth, the world would make that sound, and that is absolutely true. Yep. Yep. It is absolutely true. He, and so in our finite existence, right? Because for us, everything has a definitive. Mm -hmm. now, I, when I was, when I, I went back to school, I, I left school uh, early. I, I did two years of college and I left because my dad got sick and died. Mm -hmm. and so I left and I went back. I was taking some courses and I went back to Baruch College. That's a part of the New York City school system, um, uh, uh, you know, the CUNY, City of New York uh, system. It, it's one, known as one of the best business schools in the country. Wow. And I went there and I took one class, finite mm -hmm. mathematics, mm -hmm. finite mathematics. And in mm -hmm. finite mathematics, they teach you how to calculate what a finite number is in anything. So for instance, you learn in that class how to determine how many beans are in the jar. Okay. That's finite because it's right. definitive, right? It's a different end. But, but, but there is no such thing as infinite mathematics because that means that you'd have to figure out what the infinite is and you can't because infinite means there is no end. <laughs> so so <laughs> you can figure out the finite. Everything about us is finite. Everything has a definitive beginning, middle and end. Gotcha. There is a timeline for us, but mm -hmm. there's no timeline for infinity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what you're saying about Lot's wife, right? What you're saying about Lot's wife is there was a finite resolution to her existence on the planet, right? Based on the choices that she made, you know, she had a life prior to her death. You know, she had a life prior to her death. So there was a beginning to her life at her birth. You know, there was a finite end, you know, at, at her death. But that finite uh, incident, you know, the, that, that ending incident of her life doesn't, doesn't uh, deprive her, didn't deprive her of her, uh, of, the, of an infinite life that we know is available to the saved. Yep. You know, it, that, that doesn't mean you, you're using her as an example, but it doesn't necessarily mean that for her. Right. And see what, 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 what happens with her happens with us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your choices can have some pretty serious consequences. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But again, um, does that negate your entry into the kingdom of God. My, my argument is no, if there's a relationship and it's genuine. I'm not, mm -hmm. talking about, I'm not talking about the person who says, yeah, yeah, I believe, I believe, but never really did. You know, I'm not talking about that person. Right. right. That person, I'm not talking about that person because that person was just, was just, 
you know, maybe trying to impress somebody, but I'm talking about the genuine heart that, that, that maybe gets discouraged at a time and, 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 and moves away from, from that intimate relationship with the Lord. That happens to pretty much all of us mm -hmm. because in our finite existence, we run into bricks and walls and, and obstacles and it, and it challenges us in our faith. And, and, and so sometimes we walk away, sometimes we run away, sometimes we just stop. And so, mm -hmm. you know, um, the Lord says to us, remember where you came from, remember who I am. So he asks us not to turn around. You can't go back to yesterday. Mm -hmm. I want you to remember. And if, and if we keep in mind, if we bear in mind the time that we actually met God for ourselves, mm -hmm then that will be the thought that allows us to, to, to reconnect. Mm -hmm. And the Lord won't hold that trans, that transgression against us. He won't do that because he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and heal us of our transgressions. He won't leave us out there in the lurch like that. So by the way, this guys, let me just do this. I'm, I'm going to remind you in five minutes, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, Reread the article for everybody. Just make sure everybody's on the same page. We're going to do that. Then we're also going to ask you the challenge question, which I'm going to present to you now. Now, I want you to prepare to answer this question because it's really a personal question. When I say what are some of the consequences of turning back from a spiritual perspective, I'm not asking you to theoretically answer the question. I'm asking you to introspectively answer the question. Where have you gone when you turned around? What were some of the spiritual uh, consequences of your turning back? So this is not theoretical, this is real, all right? This is not for you to pontificate and tell me everything about, you know, what the Bible said. I don't, I, I got that, right? You hear, you hear my, you hear uh, Dial and I, we, we're pontificating. But I want to get down to the core. I want to get down to what's real. Let's talk about what's real. Okay, so we got about two more minutes to do that. Well, actually, four. That only took me a minute. And so, Dal, I'll ask you, too, to think about that question. And, um, and, and then sort of look at what we called, what you called, the reality of the present versus God's word in your life. See, I'm already, I'm already... I have to, I have to, I have to ask this question in order to answer that question. The question I have to ask is, what is God's purpose and intent for my life in the first place? You know what I mean? What, what is his purpose for my life in the, in, in the first place? If, if I am to consider what the consequences are of making decisions that, that are against him against his will what what is his purpose for my life that are that are like that if i'm gonna talk if i'm considered the con i have to know what the probe is you know i have to know what is, what is his purpose for my life what, what is it that he wants from me in the first place and not just what is it that he wants from me what is his intent for me what, what, what do you want me to do what, what what is it that you are where are you leading me you know where where, where are we going and when when I consider that and know that and I'm in agreement with that and I'm in cooperation, you know, and, and accepting, you know, we go, okay, so I got it, I got it now. So that's where we go and I'm with it, I'm with it, I'm with it. Then when the other things pop up, you know, then I know, no, I can't do that because that goes against this, you know. But I think I need to know what the this is so that I can consider. The, the 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 effect of not doing it this way the 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 things of you know uh the consequences of turning back i have to know the other way in order to be able to do, you know what i'm saying you understand what i'm saying yeah i get it i get it i get it yeah it, it, it's um you kind of have to you kind of have to look at both sides of the coin uh -huh. uh, and if you can see both sides of the coin then you can make a better decision now, sometimes we walk by faith, not by sight. And uh -huh. so we, 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 we discern what the will of the Lord is. And we discern that not because we're guessing at it, but because uh -huh. we're talking to the Lord. Amen. 
talk to the Lord, oh, I don't think that you'll hear an audible voice like you hear mine. Because mm -hmm. if you did, they probably put you in the mental institution. <laughs> that's, that's the way the Lord works. But what he'll do, he'll give you an inclination. Or he'll mm -hmm. even send a saint around you to tell you to interpret and to give you guidance. Um, you know, you know, it's interesting. I was I was at the bank today and I needed to to get something done. And I needed them to free up some checks to, to take the hold off of them because we may need it tomorrow. And I'll tell you about uh, National Night Out in a moment, but um, uh, the, the manager of the branch whom I know, I actually, she says, well, I don't know if I can do that. I says, okay, let me call, let, let me make a telephone call. So I called my friend who is a much higher entity at the bank. And she says, you know, it's so interesting. She said, I just called your name. I was just talking to somebody and they mentioned you and I just called your name and I got a telephone call and it's you. I said, really? Uh -huh. said, well, I said, I guess I need your help right now. But that's how you can, that's how you can get me to call. Just call on my name, you know. But 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 it's interesting because when I told her what I need, she said, Don't worry about taking it in five minutes. Done. Don't worry about it. Done. So I told the manager, I said, It's 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 okay, it's done. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, you know, it was it, it was nice. It's, it's nice when you have people watch this in your past that you can call on, but you never have to turn back. Amen. Amen. Oh, and it, and it, emphasizes, you, uh -huh. it emphasizes your point that you were saying just a minute ago about, you know, in, in the moment, God, God may not, he's not going to speak to you in an audible voice, right. but he'll send somebody, Absolutely. you know, he'll, he'll, he'll confirm it some kind of way. He'll, he'll affirm it and then confirm it some kind of way so that you know, this is from him. And right. it'll clear up the, it'll clear up the, He'll provide an answer if you got a question, exactly. if you're listening to him. Exactly. You know, it's, it's the Lord says he'll supply your every need according uh -huh. to his riches and glory, not your every yeah. want. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? So let yes. me do this. Let me let me, let me just kind of share this with everybody momentarily. I want to share the screen with everyone to let them know what's going on. Like on tomorrow, and this is one of the things I was doing today, on tomorrow, it's National Night Out. National Night Out is a national event. Um, uh, police departments all over the country do this, and they do it to bring communities and families together. While in my community, where I live, the 42nd precinct is the precinct that covers my area. Well, mm. on tomorrow, between the hours of two and seven, we're celebrating National Night Out. And mm -hmm. we're going to have fun, we're going to have food, we're going to have music, we're going to have festivities. And the biggest thing for us is that my predecessor, former President Curtis Hamilton, who passed away uh, during the earlier days of COVID and, and the very, very beginning of a uh, pandemic. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to rename the street, Third Avenue and Brook Avenue after Curtis Hamilton. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So if, if anyone, if anybody's out here um, in the Bronx, and you can do this, I'm, I'm asking you, ma'am, I'm asking you, sir, if you can come out, the ceremony will begin at 4.30 sharp. We'll have, we're expecting the borough president. We're expecting our local council persons. We're expecting our assembly person. We're expecting our state senators. We're expecting to have all of the dignitaries there as well as the community who supports us. Now there are a number of businesses that have extended themselves to support us in this effort. They gave their time, their talents, their resources, including mm -hmm. funds as well as merchandise. Uh, they're giving one of the, 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 the texts I had to send was one of the local restaurants uh, is trying to make arrangements that they, they're a little busy because it's one of their busier days, but to come and serve the food so that everyone can get a chance to know who they are. That's the kind of camaraderie. That's the kind of collaboration we're trying to foster in the gotcha. precinct because so, we want to take away the stigma that exists between police and community. And for those of you who don't know, precinct councils are concerned about two things, two things. One is quality of life, and the other is public safety. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things that we focus on at the precinct council level. I focus on it um, specifically at my, uh, at my level at the 42nd precinct because we want to desperately bring people together for the good of the community, that police 
as well as the community needs to work together to make our community, make the hood that we grew up in, my brother Dow, make it mm. what we would have it to be. Amen. I don't want it to be by accident. I want it to be by design. I heard that. That's I heard that. On tomorrow, we're doing that Amen. at 7 p.m. Now, let me let me sort of disappear for myself for a moment, and I'm going to share with you and just bring everybody up to date. I want to share my sponsors and advertisers as well as read the article again, and I'll put the challenge question out there, as I said. And when we come back, I want to bring you into our conversation so that you can then be a part of the dialogue by um, responding to the question and or uh, making any comment that you want to. And Daryl and I, my, my phenomenal guest, will be able to address it. Now, the trust you will have to be knowledgeable of all of your responsibilities of the disciples of your house. Aware of the world's difficult economic strategy? Are you trying to renovate, build, refinance, or develop your church property? Let us know our company, Jerry Ball, our consultant. This is a call at 789. Genesis 
chapter 19, verses 17 and 26 from the New Testament version. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, Escape to your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the tent. Escape to the mountain, lest you be destroyed. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a killer. Don't look back. The story is not true. Not with Abraham's name. The same is the father of the state. The one who fathered the child of son had lived a hundred and took Lot with him and left to home to his family. Abraham gave Lot the choice of which part of the land he wanted to live. Lot chose to live in the same city of the Sodom and Gomorrah. They were cities known as the same and the same. There came a time when the Lord's fury was unleashed. The Lord instructed Lot to get out of that town, take his family with him. God didn't say not to return. As well as their own. And so we're back now. I want to thank you so much for just allowing me to introduce to, well, not introduce, but to recognize my sponsors and advertisers. And I'm encouraging you to support them because they support what's important. They support this Madison Faith family. They support the show. So please, ma'am, please, sir, don't take them for granted. Reach out, especially to the JLR company. That's my company. All you got to do is call. You know, go to my website, J. Lauren our consulting <laughs> LLC, you know, J. Lauren Russell Consulting, uh, dot com, and you'll find it there. Please do that. If you've not been to the website, you should do it. I, uh, it's a pretty good website, I, if I have to say so myself. And by the way, we have a phenomenal guest on tonight. You know, normally what would happen is that when I ask the challenge question, I put it out there. Uh, Daryl is one of the first persons to respond. He always got this really good intellectual, theological response that challenges us, and we use his responses to bounce off of and to carry the show, especially in the second half and the second hour. But he's my guest tonight. So he ain't gonna be writing nothing. He's gonna be talking about it. So I'm looking for you to answer the question, what are some of the consequences of turning back from a spiritual perspective? And we were talking- Can I throw something out there? Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, so mm, growing up in the Bronx, when I was a teenager, um, I wasn't always a Christian, you know, I'm really? just saying, you know, I wasn't always, I wasn't always. There was a time, Dr. Russell, there was a time. And so down in Harlem, uh, I used to smoke, used to smoke reef back in the day, we called it reefer, right? When I was a teenager, I used to smoke reefer, right? I, 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 it, 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 it was what it was. And well, it's legal friend, now. Huh? It's legal now. It's legal now. <laughs> right, right. Um, and back then, we enjoyed it like it was legal then. And so the best, the best could be found um, downtown, around 10th Street, between 110th and 125th Street was, was the best. At least my best friend, he had some connections down there. So we wanted to get downtown, and we had just enough money to catch the subway, to go downtown, get us some and make it back to the Bronx where we live. At this time, I was living off of Story Avenue. Um, so so what, what that meant was we, we didn't have enough money for the subway, you know, to pay for the subway. 
We was young teenagers and we just had just enough money. So we were like, ah, that's no problem. We just hop over the turnstile. That's a lot of that's, that's what a lot of kids did at that at that time. All right. So uh so we made it to the train station and hop over the turnstile. And soon as my foot touched down on the other side of the turnstile, there was a transit policeman right there. I couldn't get away. There was no, I, there was no, I was, I was cold busted, cold busted. So they took me to lock up, right? And it was really, because we were so young and whatnot, it was more like a stern talking to, you know, and all like that. But I, but I felt it. You know, I felt I I felt bad. I felt bad, not just bad that I had got caught, because a lot of people, you know, they just they like the, how they are, but then when they they just mad because they got caught. Right. I, I felt bad. Right. I, I felt bad. All right. And so the the spiritual thing that I'm basing, I got two parts of this. That was part A. The spiritual thing I'm basing it on is God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Mm. Okay. He resisted the proud and gave grace to the humble. So at that time, I was not humble. I was proud. I could get away with it. I could do this and I could get away with it, right? And so, and I didn't. And there was a consequence to that. I, I got busted, you know, I got busted, all right? So just today, my wife and I were out and about and I've got a, I've got a Camaro that's a pretty fast Camaro. And um, I was coming across a bridge that is close to my house. And the road in front of me is usually packed with traffic. It's a nice long bridge and usually it's packed with traffic, especially around rush hour time, which was the time I was coming across the bridge. Today, for some particular reason, it was, it was, it was empty and it was wide open and I could feel it in my chest. It was calling me to push that pedal down on that car and, and, and jet my car, because I love the way it sounds when, when the engine revs up high, right? And so, but the scripture is in my head. You know, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. It's, 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 it's just like, it's in my head. And so even though I could have, and there was no police around, nothing, anything like that, even, even though I could have, I didn't. I kept it at the speed limit, and went on across the bridge. And then on the other side of the bridge, there's a light. And so as I'm passing through the light, there's two police officers sitting off to the side, side by side. They was waiting for somebody to do. <laughs> just with the radar. Right, they, yep, 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 yep. It was just waiting, but they was tucked in the cut. So you couldn't see them. You know, you couldn't see them until it was already too late and you'd already done what you had done. But I said, thank you, God, for your for your scripture, because that's what saved me is the the truth of God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. It, 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 it did not become an issue where I was pulled over, blue lights, get a ticket, blah, 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 you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so the, the, I, the, 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 the consequence from the one was apparent, the consequence from the other was apparent, and what it did was both times it confirmed God's truth that he resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You know, that, that's my own personal uh, personal example I can use just to say, you know, how, how does it how, do, how does it affect? That's the personal one I can use. That's interesting um, that you mentioned and you went back to the marijuana days, the reefer days, the joints and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh -huh. I had a home going service this week for a friend of mine, dear friend of mine. Um, I've known his, him and his family for well over 40 years. Um, and, um, and during the service, um, I had mentioned that his sister had come to a party that I, that I, I was the promoter for, I was my party. Mm -hmm. And, um, this was back, I, I, I can, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was like, I was, I was 20 years old, same year that my dad died. And it was the first event, major event that I ever promoted. I did a lot of other things before, but this was the first one I did. And so... I did this thing and his sister won the grand prize. You know his, sister. Grand, his sister. Yeah, the brother okay. who passed away, his sister won. You know what the grand prize was? Uh -huh. An ounce of marijuana. Oh, really? Yep. So I, I identify with what you're saying. Listen, I wasn't always a minister either. I wasn't always in the Lord. 
I understand. I knew him, and it's interesting, right? I knew him. I had been, at that time, I had been baptized. I was, you know, trying to develop the relationship, but I was still had one foot, you know, in the world. And, um, and, I, and I was there, and I stayed there uh, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. so one day, the Lord kind of opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. And once he opened my eyes, he said, look where I'm taking you. Amen. I'm going to let you take a glimpse. Now, Amen. thank God I wasn't like Moses, who said, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you see it, but you'll never enter in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I Great saw time. it, mm -hmm. he said, don't turn back. Don't go back to what you were. Mm -hmm. Go back to the marijuana. Don't go back to the cocaine. Don't go back to mm -hmm. the drugs. Don't go back to the alcohol. Don't mm -hmm. go back to the, you know, to 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 the holiday. All of those things. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm taking you. Some mm -hmm. of the some of those some of those um, revisions, trans uh, transformations came easily. Others difficult. Mm -hmm. But I'm still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I said it emphatically and it's my belief that lot's wife although she turned and was turned to a pillar of salt mm -hmm. does not necessarily does not automatically eliminate her from the kingdom right right the choices that we make have consequences mm -hmm. some of them are spiritual some of them are physical some of them are in the land in which we live mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I like to use the illustration that if you have a relationship with someone and it was an illicit relationship, it was one of those lustful relationships, and, you know, the Lord forgave you for it. But in the process of doing that, you either contracted a sexually transmitted disease or someone mm -hmm. became pregnant. Mm -hmm. Well, either way, you have to live with the consequences of your action. The Lord forgives you, but it doesn't mean that he will, in fact, um, you know, remove the consequences of your deed. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we, as human beings who uh, live in in time, you know, we, we, we can't really see the e eternal we just believe, we believe what the word that comes from the eternal, but we, we can't see it yet and we haven't lived there yet to have memory of it and familiarity with it. We're, we're just familiar with this finite existence. Um, I think that because of that and with us being so familiar with things here, we, we, we don't know how to, or some people don't know how to, um, accept that as the truth. You know, they don't know how to accept that as the truth. They don't, they don't know how to to make that the priority in in their daily daily life. It's so difficult for people to separate the familiar from the promise. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm gonna say that again. There's a difference between the familiar and the promise. The promise is eternal. God is the eternal God. He created time. He exists outside of time. And so what exists with him outside of time was, is, like you were just you were saying earlier about is what is, is Jesus is because Jesus is. Jesus, Jesus ain't just was. Jesus is. He was always is. He was never not it, you know, um, but but that's out. But that's because he exists in eternity. He just popped out of the eternal to pop in here where we it were and are and will be or won't be. But us here, that's all we know is George Washington was, but he ain't no more. You know, he Moses was, but he isn't right now. So it, and we're familiar with that. We're familiar with decay, you know, we're familiar with new and then used and then old, you know, we're familiar with, with, with that, you know, that, that, that cycle. 
and the ending of a cycle like that with 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 destruction and now it's no more. And so we we tend to think that um, even our choices or uh, the principles that we, that come from God they're not as important as or they're not as real as um, the things that we face on a daily basis that are that are more real. My leg hurts. You know, my leg is broke. You know, I'm 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 sick, and um, I got this. Uh, my 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 I got a headache. You know, and and we they 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 speak things and claim them. You know, they claim them as that's what that that that's what it is. But the promise says something different, and because the promise says something different, and it doesn't say what's familiar. Unless a person has really allowed themselves to become transformed into accepting the promise as having greater veracity, you know, greater truth than the familiar, if they haven't been transformed into belief, they just gonna always fall back. And then we go with the no turning back. They're gonna always fall back into the familiar, you know, um, and that's to. Uh, their detriment, because if we ever do answer the question, what is what is God's intent for us? We'll see that God is trying to transform us from glory to glory to glory, from what we were to something better, to something better, to something better. And it's in our best interest to cooperate with that process of transformation. We can't anticipate it. We can't look forward and say, oh, I know what he's going to make me. You have no idea what he's going to make you, to tell you the truth. None of us do. We don't know what he's going to All we know is he, God, is a God of love, and he loves us. And I, I, I was just on Bible Gateway just a minute ago, and, you know, Bible Gateway um, in Deuteronomy. I mean, Deuteronomy, like chapter seven, verse nine, it says, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And so God keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. So this is part of his intent is that's how we know we can follow him and believe in him walk by faith and not by sight because we know his nature his nature is that he's merciful his nature is that he's loving it's it shouldn't be can i really trust god i mean i heard what he said but can i really trust him it, that sh this shouldn't be a hesitation because this his nature his nature is he loves he, i'm gonna back up a verse Deuteronomy 8, but because the Lord loved, because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. So this is it's talking about his nature. Because the Lord loved you, his nature. He would keep the oath. That's his nature, which he had sworn unto your fathers, which is part of comes an action that he took from his nature. He has sworn. That's an action he took from his nature. Had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. He, he put some he put some some effort into it with a mighty hand. He didn't just he a mighty hand. I'm just gonna stick with that, and redeemed you out of the house of the bondmen, which is where you were, which is where they were. They were slavery. They were in bondage. Couldn't free themselves. They weren't the masters. They were somewhere, but where they were was in bondage. They were somewhere uh, 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 victims. You know, they they were in a victim status, um, victimized status. from the hand of uh, Pharaoh king of Egypt. And so it describes the beginning of his nature. And then it goes on in verse nine to, to say what I just read a minute ago. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, uh, the faithful God, again, his nature, which keepeth covenant, again, his nature, and mercy, again, his nature, with them that love him. That's just a, a, a piece for us. So love him back. It's that, that's the response to all of this information that we got and all of this evidence that we have about what his nature is, we got enough proof of how he is. He, his response for us back is to love him. 
Love him back. A lot you know? of people, a lot of people, um, you know, uh, I guess I, I, I was going to say through no fault of their own, but that's not true. Um, mm. But a lot of people um, don't really know how much of God's nature he's actually shared with us. So we have a propensity mm -hmm. to our sinful nature mm -hmm. to kind of make stuff up about him. Mm. Uh, for instance, in the same book, Deuteronomy happens to be one of my favorite books in the Bible. Ah. That's, that's, that's the book that I say, God, don't play that. He don't play that. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, like, you write or else. Mm. I think it's the 28th chapter. He says, but when you get into that land, flowing with milk and honey, with all those wonderful things, and you have pomegranates, and you have houses that you didn't build, and wells that you didn't dig, and all that kind of stuff, all these wonderful things, he says, he says, and then you think for yourself, me and my might have done this. And then he says, and I, and I, I, I this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. He says, um, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish the covenant that he made with your ancestors, even as it is this day. Yes. You are living in the overflow of the blessing that God promised to your ancestors. Come on, Dr. Russell, come on. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. God gives us the overflow. Yes. And because of the overflow, we are magnificently blessed he says i've given you power to get wealth not you Amen. Amen. so that i can establish the covenant that i made with your ancestors mm. back then now think about this look mm -hmm. i'm an african-american brother I, I i my family from you know somewhere in africa i don't know when somewhere mm -hmm. i know mm -hmm. my family is african-american and as far as I know, I can't trace my history back too far because they'd have messed up the book so bad that I can't tell where I'm from. But I do know my grandparents and my great grandparents were from America, which okay. means that they were slaves, mm. which means that the prayers that they prayed back then, the prayer mm -hmm. for freedom, the prayers for justice, the prayer that they would have an equal opportunity in this country, the prayer that their children and their grand would not have to suffer what they were going through. I'm living in the overflow of those blessings, of those prayers. Had nothing to do with me. I, I you know, I, I wasn't there, but, 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 but because of God's faithfulness, they may not have seen the end result. Right. They didn't experience it. Mm -hmm. But look at you and look at me today. You, mm -hmm. you could make a decision to move into the South where mm -hmm. folks, you know, a generation ago, we're moving away from the South. That's right. Because of the treatment and so on and so forth. But God's mm -hmm. grace and his mercy, mm -hmm. right? He said, no, you can choose to live anywhere. You just keep looking forward. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of all of the things before you. Now, mm -hmm. interestingly enough, you know, when the Lord talks about putting on the whole armor of God, he talks mm -hmm. about being shod with the preparation of the gospel, you mm -hmm. know, talking about having your, your breastplate, you know, your your, gore, your, your your loins guarded, you know, your thighs, your legs, all that stuff. Do you know the mm -hmm. only part of your body that's not covered? Mm -mm. Your back. There's nothing right. covering that's your back. That's right. Because he says, go forward, not backward. You that's right. Your back, you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Make yourself vulnerable. So you got to go forward, go forward in faith. You may mm -hmm. not see the end results. You may not be able to envision it, but go mm -hmm. forward in faith, believing that the God that we serve is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his own glory with exceeding great joy. If you go forward, he says, I got your back. Behold, goodness and mercy shall mm -hmm. follow you mm -hmm. all the days of your life. That's what's got your back. Absolutely. Goodness and mercy. Right. You got, you got, you got twins, not Sodom and Gomorrah. You got right. Jesus and mercy standing on either side of you. They got, God says, I got your back. You yes, go sir. Forward. Yes, you sir. Go yes, I sir. got your back. That's the thing that when I think about it, right, when I'm, when I start to feel and get down on myself, because maybe, 
you know, I'm not doing the things or I'm just not feeling that, you know, the Lord is hearing my prayer and, and, mm -hmm. and, and I'm struggling with some things and I've struggled with a lot of things in my life. Sure. So, but I think about it. I say, but Lord, you know, you promised me some things. Mm -hmm. You made me some promises. <clears throat> Lord, I'm just holding you at your word. Mm -hmm. you told me that the latter days of my life will be better than the former days of my life. So, you didn't go. write in the book, you didn't, but I, I, I felt it in my spirit. I know that, I know sure. that you made that promise to me. My sister, mm -hmm. same thing. The ones that live in South Carolina, same thing. The Lord mm -hmm. promised me that she, a lot of years of her life, would be greater and better than the former years of her life. And when Amen. she had that horrible accident when she almost died, I mm -hmm. reminded the Lord of what he told me. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, I can't look back. I got to look forward. You told me that the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the latter years of her life, that which is before her, would mm -hmm. be greater than that which is behind. I'm not looking behind. I'm looking forward. In the Amen. Lord, okay, son, I hear you. Granted, granted, that's 19 years ago. Wow, 19 years ago. I'm so grateful. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, God. Thank you, God. So, you know, when I say these things, right? Thank you, God. I'm not saying them because I'm trying to say that I'm anybody special. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just a regular guy, you mm -hmm. know, that, that, that tries to use and do with what the Lord gave me, mm -hmm. what will honor him. And what I say to bring glory to God, glorify mm -hmm. God, edify his people, mm -hmm. and terrify Satan. Amen. It's, it, it's a, it, it would be my, my, my prayer that when mm -hmm. I get up in the morning, that the Lord, that the Lord will say, good morning, son. Mm -hmm. And Satan and all of his demons will say, God, he up again. <laughs> you know because, because because it's the forward progress it's where we're going uh, mm -hmm. living in the present doing using the, the cash mm -hmm. that you have in your hand today mm -hmm. to be a blessing to people mm -hmm. to, 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 to help someone along the way as dr king said then my living not See, and that's 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 one of the reasons, uh, Dr. Russell, um, that I'm honored to be on your show, because I believe I I have choices. Like there was a choice to not be on the show after I was invited, and there's a choice to be on the show. But for me, it was no choice. <laughs> for me, it was no choice because because. The, the Bible speaks that the harvest is great, but the laborers are few, okay? And I believe that God is good and his intent for mankind, his creation, every single person ever been born, he knew, he knows every single one from the, from the beginning, from the alpha to the omega. And he has a great destiny, not just a good destiny, not just a good enough destiny. He has a great destiny for every single human being that he ever designed. He's got a great destiny. And he has, uh, he, he because we're in time, there's a maturity process that has to happen. Some people are at work um, allowing themselves to become mature. And some people are at work enough, they've, they've matured enough where God can be like, okay, so I've got you matured to this level. I need you to go and help some of the, some of the others mature, you know, in this particular way or this particular way. And um, I believe you're sincere in, in allowing yourself to be used like that. And so it's an honor for me to come on to your show I'm, uh, uh, my hope is to assist you in doing that to your audience, to the people that listen to you, because this is why you're doing it. This is why this show is here, is to help edify, you said that a minute ago, is to help edify the church, is to help build the church. The people who ain't going to come in, they ain't going to come in. This show ain't going to do nothing for them, because they they're not going to hear it. The, the ones who ain't going to hear it, they ain't going to hear it. You can't do nothing for them. But the ones the, the ones who are here and the ones who are listening um, now that may be here live and the ones who might hear watch the show again, you know, when I'll be rebroadcasting and so on and so on, the ones who catch on to this later on and hear it again and who hear what's going on and they hear the voice of God 
in what you're saying and what's being talked about on these different shows. Those people matter to God. They matter to him. And if I can, in any any way I can, assist you in reaching them as God has assigned you and anointed you to do that, it's my honor, man. I, I, I'm honored to be on the show. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that. I really do. I, I try to, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm not, let me put it this way. J. Vernon McGee, uh, <laughs> I listen to his sermons online quite a bit. I think he was a brilliant guy, very great Bible expositor. J. Vernon McGee has been dead for a long time. Mm. Dead for a long time. But his teachings go on. Amen. Yeah. And many times it's like it's it's not like it's like an artist, you know. Artists uh, paint or do what they do, and frequently are not noted until after they leave, after they True. depart, they transition, they die. True. Then their work begins to blow up. People begin to say, "Wow, what a genius they were! What a great thing!" And I'm not saying any of that about myself, mm -hmm. but uh, this technology allows the work that is being done and the word that the Lord is placing in the hearts of people is mm -hmm. able to keep us and, and, and can maintain it for a long time. God mm -hmm. is able to continuously do that. He's mm -hmm. able to bring forth and to continue to bring forth that word so people can choose it later on and they can get to it later on. Amen. Mm -hmm. It may not happen right now, mm -hmm. but 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 you do it right now in preparation mm -hmm. for the future, mm -hmm. and you're not turning back. Listen, I don't want to go back to yesterday. Can't do it. It's it's done. It's it's so it's, it's already money is spent. Can't mm -hmm. get it back. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what's good is that not only is the money. Uh, my wife just came in and turned on the printer to make all kind of noise. So y'all excuse me as my printer warms itself up. Um, we actually yeah. just saw her in the background. She popped into your screen. I saw her pop in. I saw her pop in too. God bless her. That's all. It's, it's all good. Oh, no, she's my wife, so she. I she know that she was like. Got free reign, you know. Man, listen. If she come up behind you and give you a kiss on your forehead and turn back around and do what she's doing, we good with that too, absolutely. you know. Absolutely. <laughs> see, see her face come in and gone. That's good. There you go. There you go. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so here I got a couple of comments. Let me, let me, let me, let me share with you what I'm looking at here, right? I don't know if you're looking at it or not, but I got a. Uh, I, I challenge people, and so some of my some folks have have responded. So here's the first one, Evelyn. Uh, Dolores says, "Turning back stops your spiritual growth in knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of what God's purpose is for your life." Amen. So when you uh, when you when you turn back around, you know, you, as you said, you said it earlier, Daryl, that you are um, you're out of position. The blessings that God had in store for you, mm -hmm. you can't get them because you're out of place. Amen. Place. So, so 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 if you think about it, right? We talk about often, you know, stay in your lane. Right. Stay in your lane. Well. If you stay in your lane, then you'll be able to get the blessings that the Lord has prepared for you. If, if, mm -hmm. if you're supposed to be a cook in the kitchen, then mm -hmm. why, are you, why are you trying to preach from the pulpit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, uh, in my case, right? Mm -hmm. Lord called me to preach and to teach. Mm -hmm. Why am I trying to sing in the choir? Right. I can't sing. I mean, but, Lord, but, but tradition. Me. See, traditional right. Right. because because right. mom and them sang, your older brother sang in the church, your daddy sang it, or your uncle sang, and and so that's that's. But but everybody else around you can see that the calling on your life is to teach or to be or to preach, you know, or something like that. But but to to be sometimes people do it to be a people pleaser, you know, and but we ought to please God rather than men. And so they make decisions to be a people please. They don't want to offend family members. They don't want to break ranks because it's been passed. It's a tradition that's been passed down. And uh, mm -hmm. they, they're missing the personal relationship with God that they, that they have access to. 
you know, God, God doesn't restrict mm. relationships. I ain't trying to have a relationship with certain people. No, he wants to have a relationship. Let me tell you something, all y'all who's, who's listening and, and, and who, who view this later on. God wants to have a relationship with you, personal. He wants you to know him. He already knows you. He wants you to know him. And he wants you to know him in such a way that you see yourself in him and you see him in you and y'all can walk and talk in such a way together, okay? Together, and I mean this, that y'all can walk in such a way together that he can take you from not good enough to good and then from good to better and then from better to best. And his best goes beyond what you think of as best. He got best that he's got prepared for you already. You don't know nothing about, you can't even conceive of it. And that's not saying anything bad about you. It's just what you don't want to be is closed-minded about what could happen. What you want to do is you want to be open-minded and trust him that he, he's got something so big and so great and so, so wonderful for you, number one, it can uplift you out problems. It can get you out of mud. You put in the mud, you're stuck in the mud, you're walking around in a circle, can't seem to make progress. All different kinds of things could be the current situation that you're in right now and, 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 and be devoid of hope. It look hopeless. It look like ain't nothing gonna happen. Uh -uh, uh uh God has answers, immediate answers for those things right there. But not only that, once he gets you out of that, he gonna lift you up and teach you things and take you places and he's going to he's going to wow you and wow you again and wow you again till you so he's he till you you look at him and he's so awesome that you got to get more of him because he keeps showing you how awesome he is and he knows how to be awesome to you not to not my kind of awesome not that Russell's kind of awesome he knows how to be awesome to you you just got to begin if you ain't already got a good relationship with him or relationship with him at all start, just start, just just start that relationship with him and let him take you from, from, from where you are right now to where, he, where, he's, where you can be. Let him, he wants to work on your situation, your issues. You ain't got to be like, well, I ain't ready to give him right now because I'm not good enough. You'll never be good enough. You can't wash your, your dirt away from you. You can't be like, well, I'm dirty right now. So I don't want to get in the bathtub because I'm too dirt, dirty to get in the bathtub. Right, I'll wait till right. I'm clean, then I'm gonna get in the bathtub. You can't be like that. Go to get, as, as you are, come to God mm. and let him and, and begin the process. I begin the process. He's gonna shake stuff off of you, what don't belong. And he's gonna bring out of you what's in there that was that's, that's good. And he's gonna add to you stuff that's better. And he's gonna take you places that's best. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you. That's the way that you want to go. I like it. I like it. So let me share with you some of the other comments. He said, the Lord, Evelyn Mayrand says, we are never to go back to where God or where God has brought you from. We must mm -hmm. keep our eye on the prize. Mm -hmm. If you are looking back, you will get sidetracked in mm -hmm. his presence and hearing his voice. Amen. Mm -hmm. Gloria says, turning back from a spiritual perspective can cause one to lose their soul. Mm -hmm. And then she says, I thank God he did not put eyes in the back of my head, Ooh. but in the front to move forward. Let me touch on this thing. What she said about, about losing souls. Mm -hmm. I like that because as in thinking about this show tonight, I wrote this down. God is not a reaper of souls. You know, he's not a reaper of souls as in a grim reaper. You know, sometimes when you talk about souls and you talk about God, people get scared because they get demonic messages from movies and stuff like that. And so they get scared of God. They actually run from him because he's like, I don't want him to get my soul. You know, no, 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 no. He's not a grim reaper of your soul. God is a savior of lost souls. It's a lot of lost souls that's out right now. He's a savior of lost souls. And he creates new pathways for your soul. Consider your soul as in your whole you, you know, your whole you, including your body, including the work that you do, 
including the circle, the environment that you find yourself placed in. Consider your soul as in your whole circumstance of, of you and your whole circumstance. And God is a savior of souls. He's not a grim reaper of souls. He's a savior of souls. So don't let that word scare you. Understand that God wants to uplift. <laughs> he wants to uplift your soul. Amen. Okay, I like that. I like that. So let me let me share with you Evelyn's comment. This good one. Many times, if you wait and observe what God is doing in your life, mm -hmm. you will know what God's purpose for your life is. But many times, we don't want to wait and right. let God direct you or let God direct us. So, right. so uh, which is interesting because I think what you're saying is right. Sometimes we get sort of caught up in, 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 in what we're trying to get done and we, we kind of forget that God is always in charge. Mm -hmm. When we do that, um, we, 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 we miss the mark. Um, uh, like Dolores says, I pray for content, consistency and commitment to continue mm -hmm. my spiritual journey in the world or in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and so, you know, we do that. Uh, you know, Dar, you're right on point. You're right on point. Uh, all all these comments are right on point. You know, you you the Lord is not looking to to chastise you and take away your your soul and think that's not his that's not even his perspective. He's like, no. I want to I want to redeem your soul. It's already you, you know your soul is already in the pawn shop. <laughs> already been sold. True. I want to I want to bring it back. I want to give you back. But I promise I want to give you life and that more abundantly. Yeah. I'm not looking to, 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 to pawn your soul. I'm looking to redeem your to soul. Redeem. Yes. yes, 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 yes. That's 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 so good, sir. That's that's I, I'm not I just I ain't gonna touch that. That is that right there is good. That's good right there. Thank yep. you, Lord. Thank the you, Lord. Says, don't don't give up before the miracle. Don't Amen. give up before the miracle. Amen. My, my soul. There is a miracle coming. My, my soul, my heart, my, my mouth um, says, thank you, Lord. You know, it says, it says, thank you, Lord. Just from my own perspective of, of what he's done for me and the response of gratitude. Mm. It's just, it's just, thank you, Lord, is my verbal expression of what I feel as gratitude. And some people are in situations where they are, they're so hopeless and they're so downtrodden mentally or emotionally and so depressed and in such a dark place that they can't connect with gratitude and then express that gratitude and, and, and express the testimony that comes when people see the gratitude. You know, if, if, if you behave, if you smile and you're happy and you know, you 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 being thank you, oh God, and and someone will ask you, well, what, what are you so happy about? What are you so great? Why why are you like that? It opens the door to testimony, you know, for them. But if a person is dark and down and sad, they're not coming to you for testimony about how good God is, because they can see you don't have it. You know, they can see that person does doesn't have it, you know. And so, um, I'm I'm right now just. I, I have to say, I have to say, because that's how I feel right now. I have to say, thank you, Lord, because that's exactly how I, how I feel about him, is I recognize how good he is and, and, and how it makes me feel to recognize how good he is and, and all of what he's done that he ain't had to do. I didn't earn it. It was a gift. He gave it to me. He gives it to me. I know tomorrow, if, if he wakes me up, It'll still be some more goodness that's come from him, um, and uh, I have gratitude about that. I thank you, Lord, is just part of me now. You know, if that makes any sense, it's part of me now. Thank you, Lord. Well, yeah, I tell you, if you don't, if you don't thank the Lord for what He's done for you, where He's brought you through, mm -hmm. where He's brought you from, mm -hmm. that's the part of the looking back mm -hmm. that the Lord pulls up. You know, mm -hmm. where you came from, mm -hmm. your heritage. Remember the legacy. Remember mm -hmm. the days of slavery. Remember the days of segregation. Remember the days of peonage, which mm -hmm. 
debtor's prison, you know. Yeah. Remember, remember, and, 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 and if you happen to be a person who, who, who spent time incarcerated, and a lot of our folks have spent time being incarcerated, either because of something they did or something that somebody else did, or they didn't do anything at all, and they're there and have been there for reasons that they shouldn't have been. But mm -hmm. if you have been there, then you need to always remember the 13th Amendment that freed people from slavery, except if you're incarcerated. Mm. Slavery is legal in jail. Mm -mm -mm. A lot of people don't know that, but that's in the 13th Amendment in the Constitution of the United States of America. So every time a person, especially those who put themselves in a position mm -hmm. to be arrested and to be convicted of a crime, mm -hmm. you are literally sentencing yourself mm -hmm. back to the plantation. Wow. Thank you for the message tonight as far as don't turn back and the essence of it, which is has to do with choice, because what you're saying ahead of time Right? It's what you're saying. You're saying ahead of time, make the right choices. Make, make right. the choices that's going to lead you to life. Don't make the choices that's going to lead you to death. Oh, by you the know? way, we, we have five minutes left. So why don't you take a minute and just kind of exit out and you know, say whatever you have to say. That'd be great. And I'll close it out with the words that the Lord has placed on my heart. Isn't that funny? Like, we Amen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do in my, my last minute, I'm just going to read from Luke 17, 31, 33. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down and take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's life. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Mm. The Bible is saying, the Bible is saying there's going to come a time, and, and if you really walk with God, that time is every single day. Every single day, choose God. Choose God. Shake off what, shake off what was that God don't want you to bring with you, okay? Like, if he says, let him who's on the housetop not return back into the house, he's saying, I want to take you up higher, yeah. okay? Now, your possessions, everything that's in your house might be yours. Behind me, I got a bookshelf, I got a TV, I got pictures, you know, I got a sofa. All of these are my belongings, right? I worked hard, earned money, and I purchased these things. These are my belongings. But if God said, if, a, if an emergency happened, something like that, and this whole level is flooded, and I was able to make it to the housetop, this stuff is gone, let it be gone. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. And that's what God is saying is what's most important. Not the stuff that you own, you. You are more important to God than anything. You are more important to God. Um, and I'm going to stop it there because I could just go. <laughs> well, I thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Let, let me share some things. This is interesting. This is interesting. I think you might like, I think, no, I know that you will like this. I know that you will. Uh, found this and want to share this. Found this and want to share this. Well, son, I'll tell you, life of me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, eyes have been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So, boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps because you find it kinder there. <laughs> Don't you fall now. Mm. My eyes still going, honey. Mm. I still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. Amen. What a tragedy Amen. to be the cause of God changing his plan. Amen. Our future is ahead of us, not behind us. Amen. Like the Jews, his mother understood this intimately and told her son 
don't turn back. Amen. We cannot go back. We cannot go back to yesterday. And we cannot go forward into tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like Langston's mother, we must remember our past and learn from it. Mm -hmm. But we must live in the present and make the most of it. Then we must plan for the future and take full advantage of it. Mm -hmm. You have to choose to look forward. Amen. I know it's not easy because we like our past, mm -hmm. always tugging on our coattails. Mm -hmm. But let me encourage someone tonight. Mm -hmm. Every day that is past is spent. It can never be retrieved. Mm -hmm. Every day we live, it's money in hand. Spend it wisely. Amen. Tomorrow is a post-dated check. It cannot be cashed mm -hmm. until the day arrives that has not yet gotten here. Mm -hmm. When you spend your time, do it wisely. Mm -hmm. Make a difference in the lives of someone else. Mm -hmm. Then consider this. What good is it having wealth if the only person who benefits from it is you? Don't Amen. turn back. Amen. I want to thank my guest tonight, Evangelist Daryl Tracy. I am delighted that you accepted my invitation and could plan to bless us with your presence tonight for the second time. Your con contributions every week never cease to enrich and challenge this family of viewers. Your presence only enhances that tonight. Thank you for your transparency and your wisdom. Born in the concrete jungles of the South Bronx. Amen. Uh, but not joking, not joking. You bring a perspective that really makes us think twice about our walk with the Lord. Amen. But you make it very clear that we cannot turn back. Amen. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Amen. It was my honor. You might have to back again. You already know that, so you may as well count on it, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anytime. Anytime. And don't forget our sponsors and advertisers, guys. The JLR Company slash the J. Lauren Russell Consulting LLC for all your church financial needs. Call 718-328-8096 or visit our website at www.jlaurenrussellconsulting.com. That's my name, J. Lauren Russell Consulting.com. Check out the website. I want you to and give me some feedback or something. Because with the JLR Company, J. Lauren R. Consulting, it's not about the castle. It's about the kingdom. Matters of Faith, the book, you know it. You, you've heard it. You heard me say it all night long. It's been popping up. Matters of Faith, the book is available to you using my cash app. You can go to dollar sign Matters of Faith. The book is $23.40, which covers shipping and handling. Or you can get the ebook. The ebook will come to you immediately. www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. And if you use the coupon that you find there, it's a 50% discount. The book is not $20. If you get the ebook, it's $10. So support the ministry, not as a faith. Buy the book. That way you can feed your own spirit. And then Triumph Physical Therapy for all your musculoskeletal needs. Call Triumph before you take that pill or schedule that surgery. 212-234-2900. 212-234-2900. Now make your contributions also today to Love Thy Neighbor Incorporated as they prepare for their annual back to school drive. You can find them on Facebook or their website, www.lovethyneighbor7.org. That's www.lovethyneighbor, the number seven, dot org. Now, I also understand that they found a, a nursing home in Jamaica, in the West Indies, that's severely underfunded, and they're going to be giving them a lot of, of, of things. So if you have something to give, if you just want to make a contribution, love thy neighbor 7org And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Because what we'll do with that, if you telephone, text, Email, message, any way you do it. Tell a friend to join us next Monday night on Matters of Faith, the radio show. I cannot tell you who my guest will be. I cannot tell you what the topic will be. I only know that when the Lord gives it to me. I can't even tell you if I'll have a co-host. You know, I had a co-host last week. I saw that. That was great. I had a mm -hmm. co-host. I'm going to mm -hmm. do, do that again. I'm going to do that more. Maybe stretch it out and have others come and join me as my co-host. But I can tell you this. You don't want to miss it. Because whatever the show is, it's going to be edifying 
And then what we will do, we will be live on Matters of Faith as well as the J-Law and Russell Facebook group, Facebook groups. And then we will drop the episode on our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. That's why you need to subscribe, like, and share the Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Now, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. If no one told you this today, let me be the first to say that I love you and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. So get used to it. Good night and God bless. Stop my share. <laughs>